I'm continuing my project of testing some lower price carbon mountain bike wheels, the ones made by Tuff. And these are the ones that I showed in my recent video of taking them out of the box and I've got some weight. Since then, I've taped them up, so I've got some stands taped. And by the way, I spoke to the guy of Tough Cycle and he basically told me that they don't really like to include tape because everybody uses different kinds of tape. Some people may not want to go tubeless, they just want to maybe put in a regular rim strip. Or they may want to use a different kind of rim tape, so I get it. So I did get some stands, uh, 21 millimeter tape that I put on these wheels and I did put on the valve stems, of course, that came with the wheels. So tonight we're going to air them up as tubeless. And that's really important because if a tire is really hard to get on and it doesn't air up well as tubeless, then the project is not off to a good start. So this is really phase one of testing these wheels. Before I try to air these up as tubeless, I want to talk about some of the features of the tough wheels that I got from uh, one of the guys that works there. And by the way, these are carbon 29er mountain bike wheels for cross country. And they did include a cross section of the wheels, um, which looks really nice. You can see what the cross section looks like. So you don't see the bead socket technology that Stans uses, uh, but we'll see how these go up as tubeless. Now, one thing that's unique about these wheels, uh, as opposed to some other carbon wheels uh, at a lower price point, is the fact that the holes, the spoke holes of these are molded and they're not drilled out. And they're also reinforced with metal. And Tuff says that that metal reinforcement around the spoke holes distributes the spoke load over more area and more fibers. And they say that this uh, design results in a stronger structure which requires less material while uh, you know, remaining a strong wheel. Tuff also boasts of high quality surface of the rims which do not require sanding, fillers, or painting. So the tires I've decided to use on these wheels are the Schwalbe Rocket Rons. I was gonna use the Vittoria Mezcals that was on my current cross country bike, the RKT9, but I've got these and so I'm gonna try, I'm gonna put these back on because I don't wanna be switching tires back and forth. So I've got a brand new Rocket Ron and I've got a used one that's already been on a wheel. Uh, so I wanna see how a brand new tire goes on. I really can't stand when tires are super hard to get over the bead of a rim. So this one will go on the front wheel. Okay, so the brand new tire is pretty tight. Um, gotta use a tire lever. I don't like using tire levers. I don't have to, but Sometimes on a brand new tire you do. All right, not too bad. Probably average, maybe a tad tighter than I'm used to. But okay, that bead's on, so I'm gonna put in the solution. We'll spray it down with some soap and then we'll air it up, see how it goes. By the way, these are tubeless ready tires. Only what I use now on all my bikes. So I'm gonna do a scoop and a half of stand solution in these. So the second bead went on there a tad easier than the first bead, so that's good. So I'm just gonna spray my soap bubbles in there on both sides. So I'm gonna try this first without removing the valve core. Sometimes you have to do that to really blast the air in there, but we'll try it without it. All right, here goes. Sweet. I think there's one more bead that's got to pop. I hear some leakage. No. Nope. All right, I guess we're good. You always want to look around and make sure all the beads have popped in. And you can spin the tire and see if it wobbles. If it wobbles, then that tells you that there's a bead that's still got to pop into place. Looks like it's not moving, not wobbling, so that means all the beads have popped in. I hear, I hear a little, a little bit of air leaking. So that means I've got to do the shake. Yep, hear that? That's not good. All right, so now I gotta shake it back and forth.
I got it. All right, so I'm gonna do the back and then we're gonna let these sit. I'm gonna let these sit overnight and um, we'll see how they look in the morning. That's the real test, right? Is to make sure that they hold air overnight. So all right, let's do the back one. All right, so the, the back one, like I said, this tire has been used before. That bead went on a little bit easier since it's not brand new. I still did have to use a tire lever. So but that, that went on easier than the front. Okay, so the rear with a used tire, I still had to use a tire lever for both beads. Same drill, I've got the so uh, solution in, uh, soap bubbles on, see how it goes. Bam! I love that sound. Okay, so the back, no leaks, I don't hear anything, so I'm not having to shake this and go around. It used to be like with the old, you know, when you did the standard tires, you, uh, before they came out with tubeless ready tires, you really had to go around and shake, lay the wheel down like this, and then flip it over. So I, that's why I love these tubeless ready tires. You really don't have to do any of that stuff. So I don't hear any leaks. I'm gonna use my floor pump and go up to my standard pressures, which is gonna be about 21 in the front, about 23 in the back. I'll let it sit overnight. We'll come back out tomorrow morning and see if these tough cycle wheels hold air as tubeless with tubeless ready tires. Okay, so I've let these sit overnight, actually about 15 hours. Just as much air as when I put the air in last night. So that's very good. All right, so the first phase of testing the lower priced tough cycle wheels, I think is a success. The bead was about average. Now, I said in my first video of these, I'm gonna be doing some comparison to Stan's wheels because it's what I'm very familiar with. I've used a lot of their wheels and it's a higher priced brand. So we wanna find out if the lower priced brand, how it compares to a higher priced uh, wheel like a Stan's. So in that comparison, uh, let's talk about how the bead goes on to summarize this first phase of testing. I feel like getting these tires on the rim was about average. It obviously varies amongst tires. So some tires are gonna be harder than others. Some will be easier. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, I feel like tires going on the stands, Valor, for example, were a little bit easier. However, I have had some rims, like giant rims, uh, that were more difficult. Uh, in fact, the, some of the giant trans rims that I used a year or two ago, it was extremely difficult to get the bead on the tire. I had to force it pretty hard with a tire lever. So again, I'd say getting the bead on the rim is about average for these wheels. Now let's talk about that channel that locks in the bead. So I showed in the cross section that these rims do not have that. So there's some pluses and minuses. The major plus is it's really locked in. So the stands bead socket technology, uh, I've had some giant rims that have a channel to lock in the bead. Uh, so it's really locked in, you don't get any leakage when it, the bead pops in. Remember I had to shake these a little bit on one little section to get it to seal up perfectly. Uh, typically don't have to do that if there's a channel that locks in the bead. Now the downside of having that channel is the fact that it can be really difficult to get a tire off. Now the stands I feel are the perfect medium because I don't have a real hard time breaking the bead out of that channel with my fingers. Um, I've had some giant carbon rims that have been extremely difficult. Uh, in fact, I almost peeled the skin back from my fingernails trying to push that out. I finally had to use a flat blade screwdriver, which I really don't like doing on carbon rims, but I had to do it anyway because it was so tight in there. So the advantage of not having the bead is the fact that it's gonna be easier to get a tire off. You can just push it with your fingers, get the bead down into the center of the rim and get the tire off. The other uh, disadvantage of not having that channel is the fact that you can burp a tire. Um, you know, in fact, let me push on these because that will tell me. Okay, so I'm pushing and I got a little stand solution that came out, see that? So that was just by pushing hard on the bead. Uh, now, how will that translate into a ride situation? I don't know yet, 
Um, I'm going to ride these hard. I'm going to try to burp a tire. I'm going to, you know, purposely, you know, skid the brakes and pop the tire sideways and see if I can get it to burp. It may not be an issue. I don't know yet because um, I, you know, I have pushed pretty hard. Let me try another section. I can't do it, get it to do it on another section. So it's not too bad, but if you push super hard with your fingers, you can get a little leakage coming out between the bead and the rim. So again, we'll see how that translates into a, a ride situation. Now it's gonna be a couple weeks, maybe even three, before I get these out on the trail. I've got some traveling to do over the next couple weekends. Uh, and I wanna get back on my uh, cross country bike with the Valor wheels for a couple days before I put these on and really test the ride quality. So that'll wrap up this video of looking at the lower price tough wheels. Again, a carbon 29er wheel set. Like I said, I consider the first phase a success, and that is just getting these ready to ride. So stay tuned to my channel. We're gonna put these to the test. Any questions or comments, drop them below. Thanks for watching.